1 Chronicles 16 And they brought in the ark of God, and placed it inside the tent which David had pitched for it. And they brought burnt offerings and peace offerings near before God. Then David completed offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, and he blessed the people in the name of Yahweh. And he apportioned to every one of Israel, both men and women, to every one a loaf of bread and a portion of meat and a raisin cake. And he made some of the Levites ministers before the ark of Yahweh, even to bring remembrance and to thank and praise Yahweh, the God of Israel. Asaph the chief, and second to him Zechariah, then Jael, Shemeremoth, Jehiel, Mattathiah, Eliab, Benaiah, Obed-Edom, and Jael, with musical instruments, harps, and lyres. Also Asaph played loud-sounding cymbals. And Benaiah and Jehaziel the priests blew trumpets continually before the ark of the covenant of God. Then on that day David first assigned Asaph and his relatives to give thanks to Yahweh. O give thanks to Yahweh, call upon his name, make known his acts among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, muse on all his wondrous deeds, boast in his holy name, let the heart of those who seek Yahweh be glad. Inquire of Yahweh and his strength, seek his face continually. Remember his wondrous deeds which he has done, his miraculous signs and the judgments uttered by his mouth. O seed of Israel his servant, O sons of Jacob his chosen ones. He is Yahweh our God, his judgments are in all the earth. Remember his covenant forever, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations, which he cut with Abraham and his oath to Isaac. Then he also confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion of your inheritance. When you were only a few men in number, of little account, and sojourners in it, and they wandered about from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another people, he permitted no man to oppress them, and he reproved kings for their sakes. Do not touch my anointed ones, and against my prophets, do no evil. Sing to Yahweh all the earth. Proclaim good news of his salvation from day to day. Recount his glory among the nations, his wondrous deeds among all the peoples. For great is Yahweh, and greatly to be praised, and he is more fearsome than all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but Yahweh made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him, strength and joy are in his place. Ascribe to Yahweh, O families of the peoples, ascribe to Yahweh glory and strength, ascribe to Yahweh the glory of his name, lift up an offering and come before him, worship Yahweh in the splendor of holiness, tremble before him all the earth, indeed the world is established, it will not be shaken, let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice, and let them say among the nations, Yahweh reigns, let the sea roar as well as its fullness, let the field exult in all that is in it. Then the trees of the forest will sing for joy before Yahweh, for he is coming to judge the earth. O oh, give thanks to Yahweh, for he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. Then say, Save us, O God of our salvation, and gather us and deliver us from among the nations, to give thanks to your holy name and revel in your praise. Blessed be Yahweh, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen, and praised Yahweh. So he left behind Asaph and his relatives there before the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh to minister before the Ark continually, as every day's work required. And Obed-Edom with his sixty-eight relatives, Obed-Edom also the son of Jeduthun, and Hosa as gatekeepers, now he left behind Zadok the priest and his relatives the priests before the tabernacle of Yahweh in the high place, which was at Gibeon, to offer burnt offerings to Yahweh on the altar of burnt offering continually, morning and evening, even according to all that is written in the law of Yahweh, which he commanded Israel. And with them were Heman and Jeduthun, and the rest who were chosen, who were designated by name, to give thanks to Yahweh, because his loving kindness endures forever." And with them were Heman and Jeduthun with trumpets and cymbals for those who should sound aloud, and with instruments for the songs of God, and the sons of Jeduthun for the gate. Then all the people went each to his house, and David returned to bless his household. 
James 3. Do not many of you become teachers, my brothers, knowing that we will receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the entire body as well. Now if we put the bits into the horse's mouth so that they will obey us, we direct their entire body as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so great and are driven by strong winds, they are still directed by a very small rudder wherever the inclination of the pilot wills. So also the tongue is a small part of the body, and yet it boasts of great things. Behold, how great a forest is set aflame by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, the very world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members as that which defiles the entire body, and sets on fire the course of our existence, and is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beasts and birds, of reptiles and creatures of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil and full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a fountain pour forth from the same opening fresh and bitter water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, produce olives, or a vine produce figs? Nor can salt water produce fresh? Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good conduct his works in the gentleness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. This wisdom is not coming down from above, but is earthly, natural, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruits, without doubting, without hypocrisy, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Obadiah The vision of Obadiah, thus says Lord Yahweh concerning Edom, We have heard a report from Yahweh, and an envoy has been sent among the nations, saying, Arise, and let us arise against her for battle. Behold, I will make you small among the nations, you are greatly despised. The arrogance of your heart has deceived you, you who dwell in the clefts of the cliff, in the height of your habitation, who says in his heart, who will bring me down to earth? Though you build loftily like the eagle, though you set your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares Yahweh. If thieves came to you, if robbers by night, oh, how you will be ruined! Would they not thieve only until they had enough? If great gatherers came to you, would they not allow some gleanings to remain? Oh, how Esau will be searched out and his hidden treasures ransacked! All the men who have a covenant with you will send you forth to the border, and the men at peace with you will deceive you and overpower you. They who eat your bread will set an ambush for you. There is no discernment in them. Will I not on that day, declares Yahweh, cause the wise men to perish from Edom and discernment from the mountain of Esau? Then your mighty men will be dismayed, O Teman, so that each one may be cut off from the mountain of Esau by slaughter." Because of violence to your brother Jacob, you will be covered with shame, and you will be cut off forever. On the day that you stood aloof, on the day that strangers took his wealth captive, and foreigners entered his gate and cast lots for Jerusalem, you too were as one of them. Now do not look on your brother's day with triumph, the day of his misfortune, and do not be glad over the sons of Judah in the day when they perish. And do not let your mouth speak great things in the day of their distress. Do not enter the gate of my people in the day of their disaster. Indeed, you do not look on their calamity with triumph in the day of their disaster. And do not send out for their wealth in the day of their disaster. Do not stand at the fork of the road to cut down those among them who escape. And do not deliver over their survivors in the day of their distress. For the day of Yahweh draws near on all the nations. As you have done, it will be done to you. Your dealings will return on your own head. Because just as you all drank on my holy mountain, all the nations will drink continually. 
They will drink and swallow, and they will be as if they never were. But on Mount Zion there will be those who escape, and it will be holy. And the house of Jacob will possess their possessions. Then the house of Jacob will be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. But the house of Esau will be a stubble, and they will set them on fire and consume them, so that there will be no survivor of the house of Esau, for Yahweh has spoken. Then those of the Negev will possess the mountain of Esau, and those of the Shephelah the Philistine plain, and they will possess the territory of Ephraim and the territory of Samaria, and Benjamin will possess Gilead, and the exiles of this military force of the sons of Israel, who are among the Canaanites as far as Zarephath, and the exiles of Jerusalem who are in Sepharad, will possess the cities of the Negev, and the saviors will ascend Mount Zion to judge the mountain of Esau, and the kingdom will belong to Yahweh. Luke 5 Now it happened that while the crowd was pressing around him and listening to the word of God, he was standing at the edge of the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake, and the fishermen, having gotten out of them, were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little way from the land. And he sat down and began teaching the crowds from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered and said, Master, we labored all night and caught nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great quantity of fish, and their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat for them to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For amazement had seized him and all his companions because of the catch of fish which they had taken. And James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon, were also likewise amazed. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not fear. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. And it happened that while he was in one of the cities, behold, there was a man covered with leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And he stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him. And he directed him to tell no one, But go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing, just as Moses commanded, as a testimony to them. But the news about him was spreading even farther, and large crowds were gathering to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But he himself would often slip away to the desolate regions and pray. And it happened that one day he was teaching, and there were some Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there, who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present for him to perform healing. And behold, some men were carrying on a stretcher a man who was paralyzed, and they were trying to bring him in and to set him down before him. But not finding any way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down through the tiles with the stretcher into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. And seeing their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven you. The scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But Jesus, knowing their reasonings, answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier, to say, Your sins have been forgiven you? or to say, Get up and walk. But, so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, Get up, and picking up your stretcher, go home. And immediately he rose up before them, and picked up what he had been lying on, and went home glorifying God. And astonishment seized them all, and they began glorifying God. And they were filled with fear, saying, We have seen remarkable things today. And after that he went out and noticed a tax collector named Levi sitting in the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. And he left everything behind and rose up and began to follow him. And Levi gave a big reception for him in his house, and there was a great crowd of tax collectors and other people who were reclining at the table with them. 
And the Pharisees and their scribes began grumbling at his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered and said to them, It is not those who are well who need a physician, but those who are sick. I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they said to him, The disciples of John often fast and offer prayers. The disciples of the Pharisees also do likewise, but yours eat and drink. And Jesus said to them, Can you make the attendance of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come, and when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. And he was also telling them a parable. No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. Otherwise, he will both tear the new and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins and it will be spilled out and the skins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. And no one, after drinking old wine, wishes for new, for he says the old is good enough.'"